Today we're gonna try and fix something that didn't really turn out for, well, it's gross is what it is. <laughs> I just said, yes, Alright, so if you don't know, a little bit ago I did some watermelon moonshine. Link for that video right up here. And it really did not turn out very well. It just tasted like watermelon rind. And watermelon rind has almost a cucumbery kind of flavor to it. And it was just gross. So I cut up some fresh watermelon and even put in a couple of mint leaves and tried to infuse it with the flavor and get it to I don't know, it tastes like something anybody would want to drink. That was uh, a complete and total failure. Yeah, it's still not very good. It's in no way a standalone spirit that is ready to go out and live in its own apartment and get a job or, no. This thing, need, <laughs> this thing is gonna need some hand-holding. I wanna actually turn it into a gin. The reason why is because I've had cucumber gin. There are some commercial varieties of gin that's infused with cucumber that are super refreshing and they're delicious. And since this already has the base flavor that is very strongly reminiscent of cucumbers, I figured I might as well go with it and see what happens. So I modified my original uh, gin recipe. In that modification, I'm kind of dialing back a little bit on the juniper and I'm going to increase on my citrus peels and possibly go ahead and throw in some ginger too. And don't worry, I'm gonna put the entire recipe down in the video description. Now we need to talk about our ingredients. The cool thing is I'm getting a very large portion of today's ingredients from our sponsor, Olive Nation. If you don't know who Olive Nation is, they have pretty much every kind of flavor extract you might imagine, but they also sell a ton of raw ingredients, herbs, spices, including our juniper, peppercorns, beautiful cinnamon sticks, crazy fresh bay leaves. As a former chef, the one thing that I require of herbs and spices is that they are fresh and their flavor is potent. So I really respect Olive Nation for making sure that they only have the highest quality stuff. It's packed fresh and it's got those great flavors. So if you need some ingredients for your gin or if you need some fruit purees for infusing flavor into a, a sour beer or something like that, or extracts for your hard seltzers or flavored vodkas. And remember the holidays are coming up very soon. So anything that you might need for baking or starting new projects, brewing or distilling, go ahead and get them now so that you're ready to go for the holidays. So check out the link in the video description down below and also in the top comment. And make sure you use my coupon code so that you get a big fat discount on anything that you buy on the site. Now for the gin. First things first, we gotta strain this crap out of here. All right, so now I've got this all strained out. I gotta tell you, the, the, the stuff is potent. It made my hands smell like this kind of weird watermelony, cucumbery stuff. So the aroma, for better or worse, is rather potent. I mean, it sticks. I'm pretty sure it's gonna end up making it through distillation once we send this off to the liquor ferry. So I measured this to see how much I actually have. I've got 1.75 liters. Here's the list. I'm using orris root, juniper berries, dried thyme, one raw almond, one tele cherry peppercorn, some cardamom, some cinnamon, chamomile, one linden flower. Those are really hard to find. Some bay leaf and some coriander. And I do want this to be a citrusy gin. I want to have a lot of citrus punch to it. I found through previous experiments in a video up here that you get a brighter, fresher citrus flavor if you vapor infuse it instead of macerate it. Any wet ingredients like citrus peels, we're going to vapor infuse and we're gonna basically put them in our uh, rudimentary gin basket. I don't have a real gin basket. I have a, I have a makeshift gin basket, but we'll show you that later. All right, so now the gin base is ready. Still smells very watermelony, but it also smells like 
gin botanicals. Like I said, I want to infuse this thing with citrus. So what I did is I used my handy dandy microplane. These are fairly cheap on Amazon. I'm going to put a link for them down in the video description if you want one. They make zesting super easy. And since in this hobby, we do a lot of zesting, they make your life a lot easier. There's basically no pith that you're getting. You're not getting any of the white stuff, the bitter stuff. You're only getting that super flavorful oil carrying zest right on the outside. So I zested two lemons and two limes to get all of the zest. And also I cut up a chunk of ginger, fresh ginger root. I just stuffed it into my little baby column here that goes on the mini still back there. And if you don't know what the mini still is, I'll put a video link right up here for you. The mini still is perfect for handling gin runs and testing runs. It handles about a gallon's worth of liquid, so it's perfect for stuff like this, since we have about two quarts of liquid. Anyway, I just jammed all the zest and the ginger up into the tube, and then I threaded a piece of steel wool in there. Now, if you're gonna do something like this with fruit zest that can kind of compact and hold its shape, like, making a plug down in there. What you want to do is twist that steel wool so it's kind of a cord and then use something like a chopstick or a bamboo skewer to jam it way up in there so that there's always a vapor channel going all the way through your column. And then when you're done with that, you need to test it to make sure that it's not vapor locked. And the easiest way to do that is to just blow through the end to make sure that you get good airflow all the way through. Otherwise, you could end up plugging this thing. If it does develop a plug, really dangerous things can happen. <laughs> so now that I have this citrusy, gingery kazoo, it's time to get things ready for the liquor ferry. Man, I really hope this works. Because this stuff, it just, even with the incredible amount of gin botanicals in there, it just doesn't smell fantastic. So I'm hoping that the citrus and the redistillation can really kind of tame down that watermelon so it's an acceptable kind of side note with all the other flavors and not just the main character. Because it's not my favorite. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and throw in some more Olive Nation juniper berries just to... <laughs> just to cook with this because uh, these things are incredibly potent and I just want to make extra sure that, <laughs> that it tastes like mostly gin with a uh, watermelon note and not uh, watermelon with some spices in it. So I think I'm going to go for eight. Mm, that might be too much. We'll see. Please save the gin. Man. All right, so now I'm just going to uh, strip all my clothes off and go out into the light of the full moon and dance around to, uh, well, just because it's fun. And then I'll just uh, get my cell phone out and call the liquor fairy. So, all right. All right, so the liquor fairy did their magic, and now we have some delicious gin. Yes, it worked. This is not what I got back. What I got back after I blended it was 83%, and this has been proved down to about 58%. I couldn't go any lower than that because it started leaching. Now, if you don't know what leaching is, it's basically when you add water, even distilled water to your uh, finished spirit in order to proof it down to drinking strength. If you have any uh, suspended oils in that liquid, they'll mix with the water and make it milky white. That is very common with certain things, especially with gins, because we're infusing oils into it from all the botanicals. I, I had to do a, a little research. It's uh, I wanted to see if there was any way I could kind of get around that problem. I had watched a video before, uh, probably two years ago, from uh, Brewbird. I'm gonna put a link to the video I'm talking about right up here in the, in the, in the top and also in the video description because uh, she is a commercial distiller. I had talked to her previously and she helped me construct my gin recipe, uh, but she has this video on preventing luching, 
Now, one of the things that you can do is uh, really be discriminant with the amount of heads that you put back into your gin. Now, normally if you're doing like a whiskey or a brandy, you're gonna leave out most of the heads. But if you're doing a gin, there's not a whole lot of reason to discriminate against the heads if they taste good. You're not gonna get a whole lot of methanol or anything like that. If it doesn't taste good, then you leave it out. But since my recipe is fairly light, it just tasted like a delicious citrus bomb. And that's kind of what I was looking for. So I went full on with the heads. I got five jars back from the liquor ferry, all about 250 mils. One and two were all citrus. Three was uh, citrus and a little bit of the watermelon cucumbery kind of flavor. Jar four was all watermelon, a little bit funky. So the mix that I use for the blend is jars one, two, and three all the way, and then a spoonful, literally one tablespoonful of the jar four, just to get that kick of the watermelon in there. Because I didn't want to have, you know, you got to pay homage to the original base spirit if you're doing something weird like trying to turn watermelon moonshine into gin. The tendency on this stuff is to luge because there's so much of that essential oil because I took all the heads. And let me show you what I'm talking about. You see those droplets on the top of the jar? That's all oil. And the reason why it's, it's uh, formed up to the top like that and made those perfect little drops was because I halfway tried out one of her techniques to fix a luched product. If you have something that's already luched, you can cool it down to zero degrees Celsius in the freezer and then filter it. But if you do that, you're gonna lose all the flavor from those oils that are also making it luch. You kind of have to decide. She points out that you will probably never find a cloudy bottle of gin in a liquor store because it's not pretty, it doesn't look good. But as home distillers, we have the option to make a different decision. Do I want it to taste better and I don't care if it looks great? Uh, or do I want it to be nice and clear? That's totally up to you and it's, it's really a, an individual choice. Since you're doing this yourself, you can do whatever you want. You know, if you want it to taste its best, then you can leave those oils in there and just deal with it being a little bit cloudy. Or you could ice proof it. Ice proofing is basically where you put a lot of ice in your glass and you take your overly high ABV spirit and pour that in and make your cocktail. I tend to favor that idea if you are serving it to people so that they don't see you pulling a giant bottle of cloudy, weird stuff that they don't know what it is. You know, this person made that themselves. That looks like poison, you know? But it's easier to explain to someone that, you know, this is really strong. It's about uh, 120 proof as opposed to 80 proof. So we're gonna put a little extra ice in your glass so that you don't get, you know, hammered quite so fast. So I'm really interested to know that what the, the general feeling is out in the community. So let me know if you worry about luching or if you do things to prevent it or if you just run with it and how it looks is irrelevant to you. So do me a favor and post your, uh, post your opinions down in the comment section and if you have some magic technique to get rid of luching but keep most of the flavor, let me know. Because I'm not in this hobby because I know everything. I'm in this hobby because I love learning new stuff. So now that I've said all that, Let's go ahead and have a taste of this. But before we do, we gotta thank the Patreons. All these folks right down here and anybody that's not listed, any of my Patreons, thank you guys so much for sticking with me and uh, always interacting with my posts and commenting, you know, and also checking in on me and, and making sure that, uh, you know, my world hasn't burned down. <laughs> I appreciate that, thank you guys. And uh, as always, you guys are the only ones keeping my lights on. You see the oil suspended in there? <laughs> I wasn't playing around with those lemons and limes. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see if it'll luch up. There we go. And that's only about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of water in here. And so now it looks like absinthe. Still smells fantastic. Believe it or not, there are still some suspended oils on top of this. <laughs> So right in the face, it's just big lemon lime with the juniper and the other botanicals kind of coming in at the end. I don't really get any of the, the watermelon slash cucumber. But you get it with, with, the, uh, with the taste and a little bit of retro nasal. You get some of that 
it's watermelony cucumbery. That's the best way I can describe it. To me, it gives me the, the, the impression of cucumbers and watermelon having a baby. Or more accurately, having a baby. Sorry. That's really good. That's really good. I could see dialing back on the lemon and lime because it's almost spicy with the citrus oils, but I kind of like that. <laughs> I'm wondering if because these are so strong that the technique that she mentions about filtering and using an adsorptive uh, component for that filtering process, if you'd still be left with a nice lemon lime punch. But yeah, aside from the appearance, uh, the flavor is dynamite. But I do think if I tweak anything, it would be to bring down the amount of lemon and lime that I used in relation to the volume of material that I had to work with. Um, I only had a, uh, about two liters of liquid from that uh, watermelon moonshine. And so going with the zest from two limes and two lemons, I think was a little overkill and one and one would have been fine. But I was just so turned off by the original flavor that uh, watermelon moonshine that I kind of went a little overboard. Silly me, yeah. Surprise, I overdid something. You know, I'm happy with the fact that we took something that didn't taste very good and turned it into something that tastes fantastic. Gin and tonic is one of my favorite drinks uh, just because of how easy it is. <laughs> So I think uh, this, I think this will make a fantastic gin and tonic. A little cloudy, but still delicious. All right, so I'm gonna reflect my um, suggested recipe change down in the video description with the rest of the ingredients and everything. I, I forgot to mention one thing. Olive Nation also makes candied ginger or crystallized ginger. And I used this in, in uh, one of my previous gin recipes and it turned out fantastic. I, I could definitely add it to this but I think the flavor is already snappy enough. I don't really think it needs ginger, but adding some candied ginger to a gin really worked out well last time. So if you wanna pick up any of this or any of the other Olive Nation products, make sure you check out the link down in the video description and use this coupon code so you get a big fat discount on anything that you buy. All right, so I think that is it for this video. Um, I got some really cool stuff coming up for the rest of this month and uh, basically all the way through the end of the year. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, but you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon right next to it so that you can get notified when I put up new content. If you want to do me a favor, do the channel a big favor, hit the like button and uh, let YouTube know that you enjoy this content and that way they'll recommend it to others. That will help me take over the world. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Talk at you later. It's not a game, it's a rage